In learning objective three, we're going to learn how to do break-even analysis. We're going to look at several different methods of break-even, uh, accounting break-even, which is the one you've probably seen in econ class or in accounting class. That's where EBIT is zero, uh, taxes are zero, and MPAT is zero. We're going to look at uh, cash break-even point, where OCF is equal to zero, and we're going to look at financial uh, break-even point, how many uh, widgets do I need to make and sell to break even on a financial basis, meaning the point where NPV equals zero. Very often sales volume uh, enters into our decision making uh, very heavily. So a lot of times you'll be asked, how many of these widgets do we need to make and sell to just to break even? And when we say break even, you must clarify uh, with your decision makers what you're talking about. Are you talking about accounting break even, cash break even? or financial break-even. So it's very, very popular, and probably the most popular, as I said, is accounting break-even. Let's look at some terminology we might use in this analysis. Uh, first, variable cost. You see the variable cost curve here. Uh, basically, uh, it takes the form Y equals MX plus B that you might have had in a math class many, many years ago, and uh, cost change when the quantity changes. So if I make one more unit, the, the co variable cost goes up $3. And the form uh, formula for this curve then becomes Y equals 3x plus 0. It has a y-intercept of 0. Variable cost in total or equal to the total quantity times variable cost per unit. Here's an example of that. Uh, the company has received an order for 5,000 pencils. Uh, each pencil has 5 cents of raw material and 50 cents of direct labor cost. And what is total variable cost? So it's very, very simple. Quantity times uh, variable cost per unit. Uh, 5,000 pencils times 55 cents a unit. I get the 55 by taking the 5 cents of raw material and 50 cents of labor, and I get a total variable cost of 27.50. Uh, fixed costs are a little bit different. They don't change uh, regardless of output. So if I make uh, one unit or 10,000 units, 50,000 units, really doesn't matter. I'm still going to pay the president the same amount, or I'm still going to pay the rent. Uh, the same amount, in this case $38,000. So this curve takes the form y equals mx plus b, y equals 0x plus 38,000. This uh, curve has a zero slope and a y-intercept of 38,000. And we can add the cost together. We can add uh, variable cost plus fixed cost to get a total cost curve, uh, which would take the form y equals 3x plus 38,000. Marginal cost, you may hear that terminology used by accountants and financial analysts and economists. Here we're talking about cost of one more unit, a small change in output, sometimes called incremental cost, uh, marginal cost, or variable cost. So a lot of times these terms are used interchangeably. Don't be uh, confused on these. Uh, let's look at another example. This uh, company has a uh, variable cost per pencil of 55 cents. The rent on the production facility is 5,000 per month. Uh, 100,000 pencils per year are produced. What are the total cost of production and what is the average cost per pencil? So again, very simple mathematics. Total cost is variable plus fixed and the average cost is total cost divided by uh, quantity sold. So total cost 55 cents times 100,000 pencils plus 60,000 of uh, fixed cost. Again, it's taking that form Y equals MX plus B, and your total cost is $115,000. Average cost is 115,000 divided by 100,000 pencils, or $1.15 per pencil. Now, let's suppose you get a uh, one-time special order for 5,000 more pencils on top of the 100,000. Um, no additional fixed costs are uh, to be incurred should we take on this uh, offer if we can get 75 cents per pencil in terms of selling price. And the question is, uh, should all we need to do is calculate the contribution our mar on margin on this one, which is selling price minus variable cost, so 75 cents minus 55 cents, so I get 20 cents extra per pencil. There are no fixed costs. Fixed costs are considered sunk cost in this case, and I move on with that extra offer. Uh, you might hear the term marginal revenue change in sales that occurs when there's a small change in output. So again, marginal typically will mean one, uh, one more unit, whether it be revenue or sales.